wealthy and you've got charm, it would really be a sin not to have you in my arms. I'm young and healthy, and so are you. When the moon is in the sky, tell me what am I to do? If I could hate you, I'd keep away, but that ain't my nature. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was our finest hour.
a special service for the 50th anniversary of VE Day. Welcome especially to members of the Royal British Legion, to visitors, and families and friends from other places. village church. Surely we can find sanctuary from the bureaucrats in here. Well, we'd be wrong. The new law was designed to include churches. In future, public performances here, like organ recitals and village festivals, will have to be licensed. Only religious services will be exempt. Well, with the legislation the way it stands at the moment, uh, any uh, event that's open to the public will require a performance license. Uh, you'll need the fire brigade and the health and safety inspectors in here. Uh, would, would that sort of thing mitigate against holding uh, uh, public events in the church? Certainly it would, at the minimum. I think it would be a nuisance, but we, we have to comply with so many uh, rules and regulations at the moment that uh, I don't think we'd welcome another one. It, it's rather odd that we can have a, a religious service packed to the doors uh, with no license, uh, no fee, and uh, yet the possibility of having a half-filled uh, church for a concert, uh, paying a fee and having to be pretty closely uh, scrutinized. So finally we come to the center of our community life, the village hall. Let's see how the new licensing bill would affect what goes on in here. The singing is pretty ropey, folks. Come on, let's get it actually on the notes, shall we? They're rehearsing for the annual village panto. This year, it's Hickory Dickory Dock. Under the new rules, the hall will have to have a temporary events license. But they are only allowed five licenses a year, and each one covers a maximum of three days. Well, who thought that one up? The panto alone goes on for a week. The future's not looking good. More rules and more costs. The fact is that we only break even now, and unless we're going to come after and find somebody who's going to provide the money, we will not be able to run a panto. That would be a great shame. Well, since you think we've been going since 1980, it would be a terrible shame. And it provides, it's not just the cast and the people surrounding the performance, it's all the people in the village who help us in so many ways. So it's a vital thing for village life to keep the whole thing going. Good morning, sunbeams are soon shining through. Good morning, good morning to you. 
there's something strange going on. Last week, they had me reporting in Cornwall on a shop and post office in a lorry container. Now, here I am in deepest Dorset, reporting on another shop and post office. This one's been bought by the parish council. Burton Bradstock has long been a pretty and well-kept little village, and thanks to some wise investments in the last century, the parish council accumulated a nice little nest egg. This was just what they needed when the postmaster retired and the sale of his business suddenly fell through. The parish council called an emergency meeting in this reading room, uh, which was very well attended and there was obviously overwhelming support for the village that the post office should continue in operation. Uh, and in various subsequent meetings it was decided that the parish council should buy the property and attempt to set up a post office. They had £40,000 in the bank, but needed £80,000 to buy the building. This time the village society came to the rescue. We were very fortunate, one of our chairmen, when he died, he left a legacy to the village of £40,000. He also left a lot of money to other charities. And we knew that Len Coles would have wished that we put this to this post office to save it for the village, and we felt that was the right thing to do. It was quite dilapidated and needed quite extensive renovation, and so we applied to the countryside agency, who immediately uh, offered to help us with a grant which we've uh, of £25,000, which we've subsequently used to rethatch the property and also to put in a new front window. So the people of Burton Bradstock now own this vital facility, but they don't run the business. That's down to a retired publican who was selected from 25 applicants for the job of postmaster. Although the, the parish council own the building, the actual business is me, so all the profits that I, I make goes to the post office, but I get a commission on all the transactions that I do. Oh, no, you mind that, Peter, thank you. Well, I think it's a terrific idea. If they hadn't stepped in and bought it, what would have happened? Like, the post office probably would have shut. And once the post office shuts, you know, it would be very, very difficult to resurrect it. This has now been completed, as you can see. There's got a, a new thatch has been put on. And, of course, the shop window. So we've had a new window fitted for the front, as you can see. Looking very nice. There's some nice stuff in the window. Thatch. We've had a, a new thatch fit, fitted on the roof there. This has been done very nicely. 